painting now. Is that blinking? All right. Double check because I haven't used that there yet. All right, so we brought uh, Anchor in to do a little bit of training because we also got the training program with it. So uh, OSHA changes standards. There's crane fatalities every year. We've had mishaps here lifting stuff. So um, go ahead. We're going to go through a number of things with this training. Go ahead. So OSHA inspections between federal go ahead, and state plans, we're looking at there were 62,000, almost 63,000 inspections. But the number of actual inspectors in the 10 offices, 2,100 divided into 130 million workers. So uh, they typically investigate crane issues after the fact, when there's been a fatality or a significant injury. We kind of want to prevent that. Typical year, so two years ago we had 5,100 die. That used to be an eight to 12,000 number, it's great. But it's still 99 people a week or 14 people a day. Every day, seven days a week. You read about, we had a construction worker die working on the one of the convention center hotels downtown a couple weeks ago. Wasn't tied off, he fell to his death, 14 stories. You know, we. This stuff we talk about, we like to think it'll never happen to us, but it happens to people. And I know some people who've had coworkers die, so you'll see the preview paint if you lower that, I think. So 42% of injuries to cranes take place in construction, and then 24% take place in manufacturing. So we get a full quarter of uh, the injuries in manufacturing. Think about how many cranes and hoists we have in any of our locations. We've got a lot of them, okay? So, we're required to train you. Why? We want to protect you from injury. Protect your fellow employees. You're going to see some videos here. When you screw up with cranes, it isn't just you who's exposed. Uh, yeah, we don't want OSHA violations. Actually, if we avoid injuries and damage to equipment and nobody gets hurt and we're doing things safely, I'm not going to have to worry too much about OSHA, okay? Uh, and we won't tear up equipment. So, why should you be trained? want to increase your knowledge, improve safety. Could save your job if you're going to do things that are unsafe. Uh, more importantly, it could save your life. I have a different perspective. Sometimes there are things worse than getting yourself killed. There is getting yourself crippled or to the point where you can't function or you're a vegetable. So there are a lot of other things that factor in. All right. Oh, let me turn the lights off. So we have a lot of rack storage. Actually, Bo checks it periodically for us because we're always looking for damage. There was one fatality out of this mishap, but we're still not done. Anyone ever play dominoes? Somebody just say, good Lord? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how big the warehouse is going this way. I just can't. I wonder how long it took to clean that mess up. There is a person that was under there, though, too. Let's not overlook that. I, I can't recall if the guy you see running off the screen was killed or just really seriously injured. All right, so we have overhead cranes. One of the things, this is a multiple cranes on, on one railway setup, we have that. We have the collision avoidance system, just like some of the cars. We cannot slam the cranes into each other. All right, so the components, got the hoist, the trolley, your bridge drives. 
the hook, which can be the most important, the hook, and then the chain or the wire rope. That's where we see a lot of failure. If you're overloading a crane, a lot of times you could cause a collapse, but what happens is they're designed so they just won't lift the load. Or they'll go up an inch or two and then just stop. Okay? But when it comes to inspection, we're going to check all the function, but at the end of the day, if your chains are damaged or you see the wire rope is coming, is got too many strands damaged, has anyone ever seen a hook that's been bent too far? Yeah. Takes it out of service right away. Good. And then jib cranes, we've got the boom, the mast. Same, and then the same thing, you have the, ele the electrification, the, rope, uh, the wire rope or the chain, the trolley and the hoist. Go ahead. We do not have a monorail system, we wish we did in the sandblasting booth, <laughs> in hindsight. But when you look at any of these, they're the same components, they're just different configurations. So... The sandblasting is a monorail, isn't it? In the, in the well, but we don't have not extra yeah, the, yeah not like we for because we've got to bring stuff in one of the things with the crane they can talk about all these benefits look at some of the stuff we work with there's no other way to move it you know we've got I, I always use the KCP and L stuff as an example but at the end of the day and we've got 10 ton items we're picking up you know not many forklifts are going to lift anything like that. Um, but if you do do it right, there's issues. So let's look at some of the safety issues. Okay, notice you can see the wire rope here. Now you should never ride a load. We all know that. They're not real bright. Okay, now, notice you can't see the wire rope, and he's looking up because he hears, because it's still trying to pull it up. I don't know how fun, the landing probably wasn't any fun. I don't know if the ride down was. That's actually, uh, a wire rope snapping is what got me interested in safety years ago in the Army. It snapped and the hook and assembly came down and almost took my head off. Um, I know I ducked because I saw something out of the corner of my eye, but those things are heavy, you know. It would have it would have been a it would have been the end of me had it clipped my head. So here's the challenge we have. You need to know where the center of gravity is on a load. Ross, is that challenging on some of our KCP and L lifts? Yes. Okay, do we sometimes on odd, we don't have well balanced, perfect, you, know, you think about some of the shaft tubes, you got balance, but then we have corners, we have other components. Um, on some of those, do we sometimes have a, a point for an eye bolt for lifting them, or multiple points, or are they designed with that in place? If not, we try to bring them up or take them up and all Okay. Are they a lot more challenging to prep before you do the lift? Odd, odd balanced? Yeah, the bigger the heavier, the more Okay. If you're not sure, ask for help. Ask somebody. When you have that feeling of like, man, I don't know about this, or I'm not sure, get people who've done it before. There's nothing wrong with going, I'm not too sure about this. One of the things on the big stuff, we do not just willy-nilly pick it up. We do a good job, but you've got to figure out where to pick it up, and then you've got to use the slings. And what do you have to do with the slings before you use them? Who can tell me? Inspect. Inspect them. If they're no good, or they fail during the lift, we're kind of hosed. All right? We talked about also on that one video, you never ride a load. What else do you never do with a load? Stand under it. Stand under it. So pinch points. You got to realize as you're lifting it, things that you don't want to get your hand in any pinch points. You know, they talk about in machinery, but when we're doing lifts, you've got things that are going to tighten up. You've got to make sure your hands are clear. 
Um, when we're lifting stuff, pinch point issues tend to cause amputations. Okay? I don't know about you, I like my fingers. Okay? They come in handy. Uh, if you've ever had a serious hand injury, you know how, how much it affects every aspect of your life. Um, we've had pinch point injuries before. People put their hands where we've had equipment that's moving when they had no need to be there. Go ahead. This is a video redone by OSHA following a fatality. What's missing in this picture? Anybody know? No, it does. They're just, they weren't real obvious with the video, yeah. We're talking about pinch points. The human body against a crane that's swinging around like that is really not competition. Should have had barricades up. You have no business being in the swing zone. Why we're picking up the dump truck? What what problems do you instantly see with this? <coughs> Three people balanced. under it. Soft. Yeah. Soft. Soft. Well, there's only one person under it now. How can somebody not go? What the heck are you doing? Standing, pulling on a wheel of a dump truck? You know, first of all, you, you, you can use, if you have to have guidelines, you can attach them, but come on. That's, we look at that and we think, well, that's really stupid. How many times, five, ten years ago, did we get under a load sometimes? <clears throat> okay? Because it's how we always did it. You never fly a load over people. And if you're lifting something that's odd shaped, what happens when it hits the ground? Let's say you're five feet away. Is that, is that far enough? That thing hit on the wheels and then tipped over. I mean, it crushed that guy like a grape. The second, that second guy managed to just barely miss. Yeah, play that again. I can jump out of the way. How many, the younger guys will think things like that. As you get older, you realize I'm not that fast. It happens so quickly, okay? So, nowadays we get to see more and more of these videos because there's cameras everywhere. Uh, somebody at that job site knew that was really being poorly done, it was unsafe, but didn't speak up. If you really see something that you think, oh, no, this is stupid, say something. We are, as an organization, not very good about that sometimes. Now, a couple of things. If there's multiple people involved in a lift, and again, I think some of the KCPNL stuff, if somebody else is running the controls and not you, and Clint and I talked about this, you may not use these hand signals, you may use different ones. The most important thing is what? That you, well, that you both are communicating and know exactly what the signals are so that there is no miscommunication. You know, we, I've seen you guys lift loads, and you're putting it on the semi, and, you know, you've got to be back, you know, and you're like, no, you've got to go back, like, this much, because you've got to get it centered, you know. So, for hoisting it up, spin it up, hoisting down, you're going to point down, 
we're going to send a copy of the handout that goes with this presentation to all the branches and we'll have we'll have one down in the office as well for the bridge most of the time we're going to be lift controlling our own lifts as a general rule but we run into this occasionally and going back to that pinch injury something just popped into my head we don't have that kind of, we don't use those kind of cranes who in our organization might get exposed to something like that field service they sometimes bring in things because they have to lift stuff out of, of the job can you see them you know somebody not barricading and they oh we've got somebody coming to do the lift we have no idea especially with municipalities or others what it could be emergency stop <laughs> that's oh crap <laughs> and then just one hand for a regular stop at the end of the day I don't care what signals you use if you have two if you have somebody running the controls and these are also this training is for all cranes so the guy who's in a, a crane and ironically I don't know if anyone saw the story last week in Seattle a crane fell at a Google building that was being built so they were disassembling the crane so it was a construction crane so it was mounted on the roof one of those are just you see them they're all over the skylines they got ahead of themselves and took out pins near the bottom for disassembly when they weren't done taking it down from the top down okay so that's it killed how many people killed two people on the street plus two two workers so busy construction site downtown seattle the crane they're taking apart and for some reason they remove the pins down at the base or they loosen them like three quarters of the way out because they were trying to be efficient and then as they were taking doing other work they worked them way, their way out it collapsed onto the top of the building and then part of the crane snapped off and landed on two cars below I know one of the students killed was a 21 year old female college student and then I forget the other guy what he did um, so the stuff happens all the time this is probably the most important thing we're going to discuss overloading you don't overload a crane I don't really care if there's something in the aisle that you have to go around because the truck is at one end of the shop that we're loading something on you overload a crane we're going to hold you accountable with discipline okay if anyone tells you to overload a crane you tell them no you can't get in trouble for that okay a lot of issues happen when you overload cranes and you do not get to factor in the safety factor you get to factor in the rated capacity of the crane end of discussion we have had issues here in the shop we've had things that prevent us from going this way and we're using a 10 ton crane instead of a 20 ton crane doesn't matter we're not doing that okay unacceptable and will not happen moving forward it can damage the equipment it can cause collapse shouldn't because the equipment should fail to lift or it should just struggle but you could tear up the motor okay don't uh, don't exceed the capacity dragging or swinging the load we're not going to do that dropping a load suddenly again we don't typically have that ability different t uh, and side loading we're going to talk about that and they've got ways to prevent it they've got a mechanical switch electrical device but it comes down to you've got to observe the maximum capacity and if you don't know what the object weighs you need to figure it out do we have any ways to do that Clint yes we have a crank scale or you can talk to engineering okay so it may take an extra 15 minutes the crane scale what's its capacity 10,000 okay so then it, on the big big stuff it may not be any good but on the small stuff uh, it's, there's always a number of awaits somewhere in the paperwork it may be buried if you're debating if it's over the 10 ton capacity then you can use the 20 ton crane there's really not an issue on the shop all right Now they're using taglines, but 
they're still too close. Starting to rotate. I don't think he was the supervisor. He seemed like didn't think it was a big deal. <laughs> so the load's got to be secure. You cannot have a load that's going to move on you. Um, all right. Side loading. Whenever the center of gravity of the load is not, cranes are designed to pick things straight up. They're not designed to pull things. Uh, can damage the hoist. We do occasionally rotate some parts. Who brought the question up during the crane training? <clears throat> and what we're doing, because it's just a couple of degrees, is he said is fine. When you get to 20, 30 degrees and you're pulling like this, it affects the whole crane itself, okay? So you're lifting straight up, and the reason it's so dangerous, if you try to drag a load or you're lifting with too much of an angle, the cranes aren't designed for that. So now instead of having something that's like this, you've got it pulling this way, it's actually pulling on the crane and can pull it off of the rails. Okay? And here's a, so this is, think large dump trucks, giant caterpillar dump trucks. This one, there was, like us, there were two cranes on the trolley, and a second crane came by and caught this, and it's side loaded. See that guy's head pop up? Oh my. <laughs> but because of it, it pulled the crane off of, of the trolley runs, off of the railing. At, there was somebody over there, they got killed in this. Okay. That's like 20 foot across. These are giant pieces of equipment. Cranes are not designed for side pull. You know, a couple of degrees for rotating a part when we've got two of them is, is all right. But at the end of the day, it is not cool to be trying to drag stuff. That's not what they're designed for. So we're going to have a higher failure rate. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these videos are showing people are getting killed. That what The last one, yeah, it's... <coughs> Guy had his hard hat on, doesn't really help when there's an umpteen ton beam hitting you. And again, I, I've talked about it for the last couple of years. We don't pay you enough to get yourself killed. Your job is to work safely and go home to your family at the end of the day. So when you're transporting the load, we occasionally have had people complain about this. Got to be a secure load. You can't have loose stuff that's going to fall off of it. We've got to have it properly secured. We do not go over people. Okay? If we have to stop some other work, have people move, our shop, we doubled in size and we're still crowded. You know, it's the type of stuff we work on. It's just the way it is. Work doesn't flow nice and even. It's all or nothing sometimes. And we've got a pretty crowded shop. Uh, the branches have less space. So let me tell you, sometimes they're overflowing with stuff, but we're not going to fly any loads over anyone. Okay, we've got to secure the load. This would also mean we wouldn't... How high do you normally lift something when you're transporting it with the crane? Not very high? I mean, what you're looking to do is moving it from point A to point B. So you shouldn't have it six, eight feet in the air flying it over people or ten. You have to raise it up to put it on a truck, but you also have to be aware of what's in the way of where you're moving the load. Okay? <coughs> and they show a pretty tragic example of not paying attention to where your load is going. This is a foundry. That is molten metal there on the right, that cauldron. I don't recall from the training if you said anyone got killed. I do know from being in foundries and 
anyone in that area is either killed or, in this particular case, far worse because molten metal kind of hurts and it destroys you. So, maintenance requirements. We are not going to do maintenance on cranes. We bring in the company once a year to do maintenance. We keep things lubricated. It's important on the wire rope because, again, <coughs> friction, corrosion, rust. All right. This is a key point we want to talk about. Inspections of the crane are required each day before use. We're going to have some forms. We're going to get them attached. You're going to start doing ins daily inspections. The inspections are not that complex. But have we ever seen wire rope that looks like some of these pictures? So the guide is if there are seven strands that are broken, it fails inspection. Six is okay. Four is okay. Seven or eight, anything from seven on up, it fails. And it sounds dumb, but you can count the number of wires. And he said, once you get to seven or above, there's going to be another one. It just it starts that domino effect. So you're going to visually inspect wire rope for broken wires, broken strands, kinks. You can see this is all not looking right. If you come across something like that, take it out of service, speak up. We'll get it replaced. For all the branches, if you have any crane issues that haven't been corrected from your last inspection, please forward those to me after this training because we want to make sure they get addressed even though they probably should be. So, yes? How much of the wire rope can we inspect? You're going to visually inspect. You're going to lower it all the way down and raise it all the way up, so you're going to inspect all that's visible. That's what's required. Six or eight feet? Well, in our case, 28 feet to our ceiling, you're going to, or 20 feet, you're going to be able to see it. If, it looks, if you look, see something that looks like it's not right, we're going to have to do something to get up there and take a look at it. They look at the rest of it when they do their maintenance, annual maintenance. They're looking at the stuff we can't see. Okay. That usually doesn't get damaged as much because it's kind of protected being up in the hoist itself. The hooks. Okay, so you're going to check the up and down and that the limit switches work. That where those guys are riding the load, there was no limit, there was no limiting switch. The way our stuff is, it'll stop. So you're going to test up, down, if it is the cranes and not the hoist or the jib cranes, you're going to test the trolley back and forth. You're going to visually inspect the hook. Very important. The hook cannot be stretched, bent, deformed, or anything like that. The latch must work and must <coughs> spring back. Okay. There's a label on top of the hoists <coughs> that is required by OSHA. We are missing him on half of ours here in the shop. We've got, he's coming back to put them on. Uh, if a crane malfunctions, there's any damage, you need to notify your supervisor. And then verify on trolley cranes that the brakes work. Take it out of service. Tag it out. Mark it. Do whatever. We're not going to use it if it's damaged and it fails inspection. We are going to get the forms out this uh, starting next week. You're going to start documenting the inspections. Starting today, you're using a crane or a hoist. You're going to do the visual inspection. Uh, at the end of the day, any time a crane fails, it's the potential for you guys to get seriously hurt. Okay? That's the last thing we want because these injuries are not a laceration with three stitches. Okay? These are the type of injuries that can break a leg, kill a person, alter their life for, their, for as long as they live. We, we can't have that. All right, we've got a video of literally what you're going to look for on this. All right, we're going to talk about what a daily training inspection for the starting field looks like. You're going to inspect the hook for visual damage, gouges, but it's not bent, it's not deformed. You are going to check the most important thing, that the latch is in place and working, it springs in, and it is freely moving. Now this is one of our good hoists. 
The other thing you're going to do is you're going to check the movement up and the movement down. For the inspection, you'll go all the way up, all the way down. In this case, it's manual. You're going to check the movement. You're also going to visually observe and make sure there's no damage up there. With the up, down, and on the trolley cranes where there's movement, it could take a couple of minutes because you need to go all the way up and all the way down to make sure the safety features are working. Something to keep in mind, if it is instead of chain, it is wire, you can have a few broken strands. You need to look at the cable as it comes down. If there are seven broken strands, the crane fails inspection and must be taken out of service because that cable will not support the weight. We will have, also you need to have a tag on your, your cranes and hoists and these daily inspections will be documented on the form that will be sent out to the brand. Any questions? It is not that complex. The complex <laughs> exam happens once a year when they come out for maintenance. But think about the cranes. We're lifting sometimes 20 tons. You kind of want to make sure that's going to work and not have issues. We have enough issues with the load and everything else that we do. We don't want you to have problems with this. All right. Branches and people here, any questions on this? All right. That's all I've got for today. We will get paperwork and a copy of the uh, handout that goes with the training out to you. And we need to start doing these inspections and again branches. If you have any issues with cranes that need to be repaired, uh, let me know and we will get it taken care of. And then you guys have a safe week and we will talk to you in the branches here soon enough.